Good morning, everyone. Hope everyone is staying safe and healthy. Um, to welcome you uh, as the chair of the Finance Committee uh, of the Authority and the New York State Canal Corporation. I'd like to also welcome the members of the committee, uh, Chairman John Comel, uh, Eugene Nicandri, Dennis Trainer, Michael Balboni, and Anthony Pacenti. Also, a welcome to the dedicated NIFA staff and Canal Corporation staff. This meeting has been duly noticed as required by the open meetings law, and I now call the meeting to order. Uh, I think everyone's had a chance to review the agenda. Uh, I asked if anyone has any amendments to that agenda. If no amendments, I'd ask for a motion to adopt the agenda. So moved. Second. 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 All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Great. With no further discussion. The agenda is adopted. Uh, I'd like to now ask for a motion to conduct an executive session to discuss the financial and credit history of a particular corporation and matters regarding public safety and security. So moved. All in favor, Second. say aye. Okay. Aye. Aye. Opposed? Uh, the committee will resume an open session in approximately 55 minutes. Thank you. Welcome back. Uh, I'd like to now ask for a motion to resume the meeting in open session uh, for taking so, during the session. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Uh, uh, motion carries. Uh, with that, we will jump right into our discussion agenda. I will invite all the president and CEO uh, to present the date uh, for the committee. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, today I would like to uh, just give an update of where we are in terms of our dealings with the COVID-19 crisis as a follow-up to my report to the board last March 31st. So this is informational only. Uh, there will be no uh, resolutions that need to be uh, moved or approved by the committee today. Um, as you know, we've been dealing with this crisis now for uh, a few weeks, uh, um, almost a couple of months, and we have been uh, putting the, the health and safety of our employees as our number one priority, plus the operation of our core business, our generation and transmission business uh, to make sure that that is going on. Uh, we've been successful in that process uh, and uh, as well as dealing and, and communicating and, and managing the relationships with, with our key customers. At this point, uh, if you go to page two of my slide, and I'll, pr I'll primarily focus on page two. If we need to go deeper, we'll go to the other pages of this deck. On page two of the deck, um, we are now starting to plan for what we're calling responsible return to work uh, program and trying to do it in a very careful way in a phased way as Governor Cuomo has been uh, outlining in his daily updates. For us at NIPA, we have different types of facilities. We have an office in White Plains and Albany. We have power plants uh, across the state. We have substations and, and tr control centers in, in Utica and Marcy, and they require different types of return to work entry plans. And so we're going through that right now uh, to make sure that, again, we protect the health and safety of our employees and that we can start advancing uh, our key strategic initiatives. Um, questions like, you know, what work uh, do we really need to do? What are the must-do work that cannot be deferred? Uh, what work uh, needs to be done? Can you hear me? Yes. Hello? Yes, okay. We, we can hear you. Okay. Can you hear? okay. What work needs to be done, in, in, again, as I mentioned, in the office or the site, or what, need, what work needs to be done and can be done effectively 
remotely. So those are the things that we're, we're looking at. There will be a subset of our employees who are a high risk, whether they have underlying illness or uh, elderly that we need to protect and provide reasonable accommodations. So those are the, the type of uh, screening and planning that we're doing right now. Once we make that decision, then we need to continue our good practice of wellness checks and temperature screenings and PPEs and social distancing uh, at our work site, sites, as well as uh, the monitoring, uh, ongoing monitoring of our employees, our contractors and suppliers, so that if there's anyone suspected of uh, being positive, that we can do the testing uh, isolating the positives immediately, do contact tracing, and also uh, be able to quarantine uh, appropriate people who are in contact with a positive um, uh, employee. So we're doing that, and and we I want to reassure our employees, and I want to reassure the board that we are being very prudent and very careful, and that we will do this on a step by step uh, phase basis. We are also uh, going to continue, of course, our safety and reliability work. Uh, it's, it's, you know, summer is coming, uh, so higher um, uh, loads, maybe in more now residential areas are going to going to occur, but also storm season will start. And so we need to do all the preparation for that. And if I can just ask Joe Kessler to add a little color and detail to our summer prep work. Joe, both for Fornipa and Canals. Uh, Joe, you... Oh, okay. Can you hear me well, now? Yeah. 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 We can hear you now, Joe. Now we can. You can hear me now? Okay. Yes. Yes. Great. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Gil. So, yeah, there's a lot of um, uh, preparations going in place. Um, if you recall, uh, the way we kind of shut down and paused all the work was really based on uh, the essential nature of the, the work we were doing. Uh, so there was a lot of things that um, uh, milestones were down the road in terms of us preparing us for the reliability of the summer capacity period. Those milestones are starting to encroach on our schedule now. There are going to be some necessary um, maintenances and, and inspections and the protocols we have to put in place for that. So as Gil pointed out, we have had a, um, um, a number of uh, teams working on what it's like, what's, what it's going to be like to return to the workplace. And it is going to be different between the operating facilities and, and White Plains, as you can imagine. Uh, one of the key differences is, as you know, we sequestered about 80 personnel at all of our operating sites in, in total 80 people across the uh, fleet and um, maintaining that separation and going through a turnover on that staff right now so another tour is about to begin um, we are planning on that tour to, to last at least until may 22nd around that uh, time frame as you know the pause uh, officially ends on may 15th so reintroducing staff and making sure we're keeping that isolation and some of the things that we have to do um, to prevent any cross-contamination of that staff as we ramp up uh, is a big part of this plan. So we have been maintaining uh, some of the essential work from an o &M perspective. So all the inspections that we do for our typical summer maintenance, we have maintained. And I, and I would say I would qualify that to be kind of on the utility operations side. Um, so the, the energy side. On the canal side, it's a little bit different. Um, we suspended all uh, non-essential work on the canal side as well. Uh, that really amounted to shutting down really what we were doing at the time was our winter maintenance. Now what we didn't stop there, and we did not sequester employees at the Canal Corporation, but there are between 30 and 50 people routinely reporting because we also have impounded water uh, gates, inspections for dam safety and those kinds of things in place, and those have to continue for public safety as well. Uh, so that has been um, held in abeyance um, under the pause. As we start to ramp up the work uh, for um, uh, unpausing that, uh, we're going to have to make some decisions about what, what that looks like uh, going forward. So that's a little bit different uh, than the utility side. The canal side is a little bit more complicated because uh, we want to make sure as much of it is accessible from a recreation uh, standpoint as possible. 
Um, but essentially, the essential work has never stopped, either on the utility operations side in terms of our regulatory compliance obligations, inspections, and so forth, and some in preparing our assets for the summer capacity period, and on the canal side in terms of some of the uh, inspections, dam safety, and public safety uh, obligations that we have. Thank you, Joe. Um, moving on to customer connections, uh, we have selectively unpaused some uh, energy projects, you know, energy efficiency projects, whether they're boilers, chillers, um, you know, HVAC systems, or street lighting uh, for NIPA customers, primarily uh, governmental customers of NIPA. Uh, those who are providing essential services and those projects that uh, either enhance the security or maintain at least the reliability and availability of those uh, equipment and systems in their facilities. They had specifically asked us to make sure that we continue those projects. Um, we also uh, launch and, and continue to receive applications for our economic development customer assistance program. This is the program where we provided uh, bill payment uh, forbearance up to six months for our economic development customers statewide. We have about 42% uh, uh, applic applicants so far and uh, that's going really really well we're getting positive feedback and and Sarah if I can just ask you to add a little bit more detail on on those two items uh, we'd appreciate that uh, sure uh, hello uh, good, uh, good morning yes yeah, so uh, um, first and foremost uh, the safety uh, and health of both our employees and our contractors is is the number one uh, priority for us when we look at any addition any work going forward um, that would be under kind of construction. Uh, secondly, we've been uh, very focused too on ensuring that we're compliant with the executive orders and deeming what is essential versus non-essential work and, and ensuring that we are responsive to our customers that are providing essential services, hospitals, local governments where uh, the, the, the COVID response is centered um, on behalf of New York State. Additionally, on, on that end, uh, we have uh, begun discussions across the energy sector agencies within New York State, and that is being coordinated at a larger level within uh, the cabinet for the New York Unpause, ensuring that we are uh, approaching uh, any restarts of, of uh projects beyond what has been already articulated as central services um, going forward. So uh, again, as, as Gil said, we've been very selective on that. We've had 13 projects that have gone forward and an, and an incremental 21 uh, that are supporting, as he articulated, hospitals, wastewater treatment facilities, transit facilities, anything that is ensuring that we uh, can continue to operate the state at the minimal levels required. On the Economic Development Customer Assistance Program, there's not much more to add. As Gil said, we've had very strong feedback on that. We had a meeting yesterday with some of the larger uh, industrial customers uh, who operate uh, in many states, and they articulated that NIPA was leading the way and setting, setting the example, and they wish that the other states uh, that had similar uh, utilities as NIPA would, would, would follow suit. So we have had 42% enrollment for the full six-month billing cycle. There still is opportunity for customers to sign up for the remainder five, four, three, two, one months um, as we as we uh, finish the tenure of the customer assistance program. We have received some feedback that some of our customers have chosen to uh, avail themselves of the Paycheck Protection Program that is part of the stimulus package that's coming out of the federal government. However, again, uh, uh, people have been very, and customers have been very, uh, positively uh, giving us a lot of positive feedback on the work that we've been doing. So that's really all I have to add there. Thank you, Sarah. And, and in terms of uh, our you know, financial management, as I reported back on March 31st, our strategy really has been to kind of stay in place and, and preserve our flexibility and our liquidity 
and and we've been doing that so we have been managing our cash very prudently uh we've uh done some deals on our commercial paper uh, program and now we're in the process as we have reported and you guys have approved uh, the step-by-step -step, uh, work that we need to do for our bond issuance uh, that we hope to close in in early May. We're also doing some hedging uh, to make sure that we we manage our our gross margin between now and the end of the year. Um, so, in 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 from that perspective, uh, if I could just you know tell you that our our strategy really is to make sure. Uh, that we are uh, coming at this from a position of strength. We want to be able to hit the ground running uh, once we are able to. Um, and uh, hopefully that can be sooner rather than later to advance our strategic initiatives uh, to be able to do the, the work that we need to do both at NIPA and canals. So with that, uh, if I can just ask Adam to do a couple of things. One, Adam, if you can describe uh, the actions that we have taken since March 31st in terms of bolstering our liquidity from our revolver and commercial pro paper program. And then uh, just discuss where we are uh, in our bond issuance process and, and where what are the next steps that uh, until the closing in May 12th. Adam? Sure, Gil. Thanks. Um, well, since we last met, uh, we've done a number of things. We've uh, to bolster our liquidity position. Obviously, the um, the pause that we've put on the capital projects and, and certain O&M spending has uh, assisted in helping our, our liquidity position in terms of cash outflows and uh, as recently as just last week, we've finalized a uh, new revolving credit agreement for $250 million, which will also add to our liquidity position so that um, we are in, in very good shape as we sit here today. And uh, we are going through the process of <clears throat> trying to um, put all the pieces in place to be able to uh, price and execute our long-term bond issuance. Uh, next week, the schedule is, is in the is in the deck, and we continue to maintain and keep on schedule that was originally presented, which is that uh, we expect to receive all of our ratings uh, at the end of this week. Our preliminary offering statement has been uh, mailed, and we would expect to price uh, in the middle of next week, and then we would close um, within the second week of May. Right now, targeting May 12th. Are there any questions? Yeah. So, thank you, Adam. So that's uh, no. In in summary, there are no uh, negative surprises or any surprises whatsoever. We are tracking our plan, as we have outlined to the board last March uh, 31st, uh, and we are uh, intending to execute uh, between now and the middle of May in terms of our long-term bond issuance, but also uh, operationally, uh, I'm pleased to report that uh, we are doing well under the circumstances we are executing according to plan and plan to continue to do that going forward as we uh, slowly but uh, up, uh, step by step you know, do a responsible re-entry and start executing our strategy uh, and strategic initiatives. With yeah. that, let me stop there and, and uh, be open it up to questions. Hi, Gail. Yeah, this is Tracy. One question that I had, and I, and I you know, I assume it's the case, but just want you to uh, confirm it for us in that, you know, as we get prepared to move forward uh, successfully with the issuance, you guys have continued throughout to look at as you've now are evolving your plan of returning to work, what our needs are uh, financially to be able to operate at what you what you envision that to look like as things continue to evolve. You still feel comfortable, you and Adam still feel comfortable that, you know, what we're going out, the amount that we're going out is one that will get us through 
you know, sort of the foreseeable future and longer term set us in a place to continue to deliver on you know, sort of the goals that you've set for the remainder of the year and, and, and beyond. Is that correct? That's correct. So the goal really is to make sure that we can hit the ground running once uh, that opportunity, uh, there's more visibility and more certainty to execute our strategic plan and our strategic initiative, and also to have enough flexibility and liquidity just in case there's any other curveball that uh, gets thrown our way. So I think we will achieve both goals once we execute this uh, um, this financial plan that we have uh, we have in place. And I'm confident that we're going to be able to. Thanks. Gil, a couple unrelated questions. Uh, tell us, uh, obviously, appropriate focus on uh, employee safety and health and uh, wellness. What's our internal curve uh, look like? Uh, what have our numbers uh, been? And um, how do they compare to the kind of trends or trajectory that uh, we're otherwise uh, seeing in particular uh, downstate where you're headquartered. Yeah, so uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we have uh, currently uh, five uh, COVID uh, positive employees. We, our high was about a couple of weeks ago, Up, we were up to seven and, and up right. to 30 of our employees were quarantined. Uh, we're down to 23, uh, 23, 24 in terms of quarantine and five positive. And uh, we had one employee who was in ICU, but thankfully uh, that employee was able to get out of ICU and is now recovering. Uh, so overall, uh, just like New York State in general, we're, we're on the other side of that plateau at NIPA. We have you know, very manageable <laughs> numbers relative to our, our population. Uh, so we're fortunate and I'd like to thank our employees for uh, both NIPA and Canals for really uh, following the guidelines that we have um, uh, forth out there from, you know, uh, cleansing and from uh, washing your hands and social distancing uh, and avoiding places where there are people congregate to uh, people who have to go up to work and, and doing our wellness checks uh, and protect, uh, again, PPEs, uh, all of the uh, very stringent um, guidelines and requirements that we put forth. Our employees have been great, both management and union, in following them and adhering to them. Uh, even employees who are uh, working from home, we, we send them a daily electronic survey about their health, so they all report back to us their their status. Send everybody, a, you know, a, a few masks, uh, cloth masks that that they can use, and we've sent them uh, guidelines on what the uh, actions, uh, prudent actions, they need to maintain at home and in their communities. So uh, that seemed to have uh, really resonated, and it's showing uh, with our numbers. Oh, great. Terrific. Good news to hear, uh, obviously. Uh, and Adam, uh, you said uh, rating agency reports you expect to receive uh, by the end of the week, uh, meaning uh, tomorrow. So not asking you to uh, <clears throat> crystal ball it, but uh, I'll assume uh, the vibe uh, that you've received, uh, as you and Phil and others, your team have <clears throat> chatted with the rating agencies, been uh, I'll say at least consistent or not negative in terms of uh, how we're perceived uh, and that our uh, absolute and relative position of strength uh, continues to uh, be affirmed, uh, whether it be the rating agencies, the preliminary work our underwriters have done. I, I assume we're looking to execute uh, from uh, a set of strong position and uh, the current crisis uh, hasn't compromised that view. Um, I, I think that's correct. I think the uh, the rating agencies are are have made note of the fact that we are 
we're operating our business in the middle of a, the sort of the epicenter of where the COVID crisis has hit the worst. So I think they've made note of the fact that you know New York City, New York State, our area, uh, as the rest of the country, but particularly our area has been some of the hardest hit. So I think they're um, looking at those external factors around us. But as as the, for us, they note that we continue to maintain uh, very strong metrics, strong liquidity, and uh, and continue to do so. So that's been the initial reports we've gotten from the one rating agency who has uh, come out and published. Uh, as I mentioned, yes, we expect to get the rest of the ratings either tomorrow. There is one that might slip into Monday, but that's uh, just a formality. But we expect the same. Okay, great. No, I fully appreciate it's uh, somewhere between difficult and impossible to have a positive outlook on uh, uh, the near-term future, given uh, the severity and significance of uh, the crisis. But in terms of our overall uh, standing, I'm glad to hear uh, that continues to be perceived uh, very positively. So, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Well, I'm confident uh, you and, and Gil will uh, tell our story well, and uh, I remain very optimistic uh, that it'll be uh, well received and we'll have some good execution next week. So, thank you. Sure. You're welcome. Thank you. <clears throat> Tracy, uh, just one thing. I, maybe I missed it, but we didn't take any votes in executive session. I don't know if the record reflects that. Yeah, I stated maybe it got lost, but that's correct. We did not take any votes. Thank you. Any other questions from the committee for Gil and the rest of the staff on the uh, update of the actions being taken um, in response to COVID-19? Great, thank you, Gil and team. Uh, if, with no other questions, um, no motion is necessary. There are no um, resolutions we need to consider. The next joint finance committee meeting is scheduled for May 14th, uh, 2020. I ask now for a motion to close the meeting. So moved. Give me a second. Can I get second. a second? Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Great, motion carries. Thank you all and have a good day. Thank you. Stay healthy. Stay, 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 Stay safe, everyone. Stay safe. Stay safe. Stay well.